I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWise Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have George Harrop, once again, co-founder of Step Finance, back on the show. George, welcome back. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much for having me again, Ashton. It's great to be back. You're very welcome. Uh, last time we spoke, Step was working on a lot of different things in the Solana ecosystem. And it's been almost half a year since then. And I know your team has done an incredible amount of new things as well. And it seems like the industry, although there's been a slight dip in the market, it just continues to explode with innovation. And it looks like uh, your step is totally unfazed by this and just continuing to grow. Um, so amazing work so far. I would love to, for the people who didn't see our first interview, just get a recap on what is Step Finance all about, and then we'll dive into the new details. Absolutely. Sounds good. Yeah, I think the last time we spoke, it was uh, middle of last year and uh, Step was, uh, I, I guess, geez, that sounds like years ago to me now. But um, yeah, you know, we, we were just sort of getting started. So I guess to take a step back, you know, what we are, um, Step is a portfolio manager on Solana for DeFi apps. So essentially, we say we're the front page of Solana. And what that really means is we're one page that can display your portfolio, your positions across all of these different DeFi protocols, as well as having a bunch of useful features, uh, which might add value to you in different ways. This might be yield farming, this might be NFTs, might be transactional history. Um, but generally, if you're involved in DeFi, you often need a platform like Step to keep track of everything because there's so much stuff going on. You know, since we last spoke, uh, you know, Solana's done, uh, I think, a, a couple of hackathons at least. Some of those hackathons had like 10,000 participants each. It, uh, it created and spawned like hundreds of different projects. Um, so I guess for us, uh, ever since then, we've been, you know, every single Wednesday, basically, we've been deploying new stuff. And we're one of the few teams that are deploying every single week. We have like a whole bunch of new things that we're doing. And that's just because there's so many things uh, happening and new protocols popping up that we have to be aware of and all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, I guess as a, as a brief overview, you know, with kind of the one place to be for, uh, you know, all of your, your DeFi uh, shenanigans that might be happening on Solana. Definitely. Great, great uh, introduction. And yeah, you're right. Uh, seeing those Solana hackathons, there's so many new projects that are popping up. Without Step Finance, how would you even keep track of like hundreds of projects? You know, it's like, uh, it, it's a struggle to keep up. Um, and I've noticed a lot of them being towards, uh, leaning towards like GameFi, Metaverse, a lot of NFT stuff as well. And there is still a lot of other DeFi liquidity protocols and, and cross-chain solutions that are starting to come out. Um, where to start with all of this? Because there's so many different faucets of you know, what step is following. Where are you seeing the most innovation and growth since our last discussion? Yeah, well, I guess you've got some pillars of the DeFi economy, right? So most DeFi uh, uh, projects or, or, or uh, L1 blockchains will need, you'll need your AMMs, you'll need your yield farms, your lenders. In the case of Solana, there's probably like five different AMMs now. There's about five different lenders, all with TVLs, sort of, you know, eight, nine digits and so on. Um, uh, they're the sort of base functionality which you have, right? So we've seen more of them pop up. Um, but we also have a lot of the, the NFT space really growing. So now there's maybe about three or four different marketplaces which are doing sort of anywhere between, I think it's like 20 to 30% of OpenSea volume, um, which is pretty significant, I think, you know, given, uh, you know, where we are and, you know, Solana being a, a, an alternate L1 chain. But I do think that um, that's going to continue to grow. And that's certainly one space which we're seeing quite a lot of uptick on is like, if you want to buy a $2 NFT, we're going to do that. Like you can't do that on OpenSea because it's going to cost you 50 bucks to go and mint the NFT in the first place, right? So, and then in the case of Axie, like you had them basically build out a whole new chain, you know, the whole Ronin thing um, to, uh, to support their game. So actually Solana is attracting quite a lot of these games uh, to, to the blockchain. And it's kind of interesting to see how they're going to grow. Like they're going to integrate NFTs in different ways. Um, you know, and they're going to be able to put them on the decks and you can use them as loan collateral and all sorts of different things. We've seen, we've seen that, um, you know, quite a few different games uh, coming up. And I think Solana maybe even launched a fund for that as well. Uh, but we're also seeing, I guess, on the, the financial product side as well, some more complex things. So uh, you're seeing quite a few of the, the options protocols coming along. 
Um, and, uh, you know, there's these, the, what is it, the SSOV, single state, uh, or single state vaults basically for options. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so we're seeing a few of those. So there are like a lot of these things swirling around um, and you never really know where the next phase is going to, going to come from. Um, I guess for us, you know, our, our problem is it's kind of a, a continuous hamster wheel because there are a lot of things we can't spend all of our days just integrating new things. Right. Otherwise we'll do nothing else. Um, so we've got to kind of vet and validate a lot more of these projects than we did in the past, perhaps, because it might be the case that we're spending a lot of time integrating things, which, you know, maybe 20 users care about when we could have been spending time on something which 10,000 people care about. Um, so it's kind of for us, I guess this year, it's, it's going to be a bit of a balancing act. You know, there's, there's, there's coverage, which we can have of the entire ecosystem. Uh, but then there's like new features that we could build on step that people are asking for, you know, uh, transaction history, more analytics uh, for many of their, you know, existing investments and so on. Um, uh, or there could be different tokenomics mechanisms as well. So it's kind of like three core things, but you can't have all of them at once. So you have to pick two. So therefore, which two are you going to pick? And it, that's the balancing act, really. <laughs> Yeah, that's the blockchain trilemma. There's always so many things, and you're right about uh, making, you know, balancing the amount of integrations. And and I think as you continue to add more projects and more functionality into Step, you also need to manage that there's not too many things. That it's like, how do you manage the usability? And especially, you know, people that aren't technically savvy to try to get them involved without overwhelming them with too many things in, you know, in the first second. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're, we're also trying to reach out a bit more to, uh, I don't know if you call them normies, but certainly, you know, DeFi newbies, uh, because I think we've kind of reached a sac saturation in DeFi where, uh, you know, a lot of the people that are familiar in DeFi are sort of moving between different, different ecosystems, um, but you're maybe not attracting new people in. Um, so I guess we've got to be able to build that kind of bridge uh, for, for people that uh, might be interested in these things, but don't know where to begin. Um, so we're working on a few like educational pieces, like some videos as well uh, on, on that front to try and sort of just be this educator and be this place. Like we do stay with the front page of Solana. So we kind of need to uh, be that kind of educator as well at the same time. But um, yeah, I guess uh, for us, you know, I, I guess one area that is lacking though is the data area. Um, and you know, we might be able to talk a little bit about that, but uh, we recently started, uh, kicked off a $5 million fund for other developers projects which uh, want to build data tools on Solana. Um, and uh, for us, this is pretty critical because, A, if I want to know the status of my wallet, let's say at February the 23rd at 8.26 a.m., there is no easy way for me to get that data. Um, and a lot of people are, are trying different ways to do things. No one's quite nailed it yet. Um, but, you know, that's an example of a use case, which, uh, which uh, we should be able to get to. We should be able to get to that point where we know the state of a wallet. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, so we're looking to fund these kind of projects and um, really sort of increase the amount of data tools that are available. Um, like you think of things like Nansen in, uh, in Ethereum land as well, like whale tracking and these sorts of things. People are going to go out there and do it. We don't have the time to do it, um, but we would love to integrate some of those tools uh, for other people that are keen on doing it and, and maybe finding them along the way. Definitely, yeah. And I was reading into that about the, uh, the $5 million um, and for data providers. So you're right. It's about... You know, with all of these projects coming out and all the information going into the blockchain, how do you analyze it properly? How do you take that data and turn it into information to make it something useful, right? And uh, Step is doing a great job in bringing the steps to bring those projects to people, but finding a way to categorize it, make analytics out of it so you can take actionable steps uh, and, and try to reduce noise as well. So what is the useful information? you know, um, I think it's going to be very important. What kind of, um, are you just looking overall in the Solana ecosystem on anything that can really take data and bring value to it or bring specific solutions to people that are searching for something? Yeah, I, I guess it, there's got to be some sort of overlap with what we're doing at Step already, right? So it might start with portfolio data. It might start with blockchain data. 
Um, I guess displaying information about your particular circumstance is more important than uh, something which is like the general blockchain as a whole right now. Um, so for us, we just want to be able to show people more information about you know, their P&Ls, their wallet histories, these sorts of things, be able to track that over time. Um, and then, yeah, maybe that might branch into uh, different tracking and, and, and whale wallet stuff, you know, in the wider blockchain world later on. Uh, we'll, we'll see how we go on that front. But, uh, yeah, I guess for now we just want to focus on that. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, so, so that's certainly one big thing that's happening. Uh, we're also sort of very interested in the emergence of a lot of these alternate ways of incentivization. Um, so we're the, the first ones to pioneer what we're calling reward options. So if you're familiar with yield farming, uh, or, you know, the audience is, you know, generally you put some money into a pool and then they give you tokens and then your tokens are the yield, right? And then you can go and do what you want with those tokens. Maybe you dump them, maybe you hold them, whatever, restake them. Um, this has been a tried and tested thing to attract liquidity. And, but the problem is that it, you're kind of, you're kind of sealing a death warrant and doing it because you're, you're just handing out coins to people uh, all the time, constantly. And people, you know, there's lots of advanced traders which will just take this, they'll hedge it, they'll go and dump it. Uh, and it's just like a farm and dump basically and move on. So it, think of it like a, a customer acquisition cost. Like you, in many cases, you're paying tremendous sums to acquire customers who are not sticky and are not gonna stick around. And you probably would have been better off just using Google ads, um, you know, to attract these users, right? And just yeah. paying them that way. Um, so, uh, so we're, we're sort of looking, we're the first to do this, uh, this thing called a reward option where essentially if you use the AMM and you do a swap and you pay a fee, uh, then uh, we will pro rata uh, give you a, what's called a, a call option uh, on, on step. So it's in your interest to, you know, uh, use our product and our AMM to pay a fee uh, in order to exercise the option, like the token value has to go up. Uh, in order to exercise it, you have to also pay step as well. Um, which if we were just handing out coins, you know, obviously that doesn't happen. Uh, and with that money, then we're able to, to reinvest back to the stakers and put a floor price on things. So actually, I think just in general, as an incentivization model, people should be looking for alternate ways to attract people to their different projects and their platforms. And this is just one way. But I think the general trend is that the days of just having a yield farm and, hey, see you later, a million percent APYs, um, uh, kind of behind us perhaps and people are maybe looking for, for these other ways where you have to have at least some skin in the game uh, to be able to get a reward which I think is just a more healthier for the, mm -hmm. the whole ecosystem really Definitely and I really like that George, uh, having the option you know because you're right about yield farming and then just creating a token out of thin air and, and providing that token as the yield, um, I was caught in that trap uh, years ago in the beginning of DeFi when and it, it gets so exciting because the APY is so high and then the whales or something happens to the token because everyone's getting it for free. They just dump it on everybody else. And you're right, that doesn't create sustainable customers. And that project that I'm that I was looking at is now dead and gone. It was it was very short lived. Um, so I really do like that call option functionality that you're talking about. And I've I've been speaking to a lot of projects who are also working on different kind of options and derivatives on the Solana ecosystem, um, get more ways for people to trade, not just on the coins. Um, so I think that's really valuable. Is that already live in the platform right now? Uh, yes. Yeah, so it'll be the contracts are live, uh, but it's not live on our UI just yet. That should be in the next week or two. Um, but uh, yeah, we've been testing it. It's uh, it's it's super exciting, and um, I think this will certainly be the first instance of this on Solana. It's kind of inspired a little bit by what uh, Andre Cronier was saying from Yearn. Uh, he made a, a blog post on this back in August uh, about uh, about reward options and these sorts of things. So we're kind of adapting a little bit of what what he was said there to uh, to our particular situation. Um, but I, I think it would also create like let's say it's a, a bull market or a bear market, projects could use these kind of strategies for making sure that their coin doesn't inflate during a bear market, mm -hmm. which just kind of makes the situation worse. You know, if you have these big APYs during a bear market and the token's going down as well, you know, there's even more incentive for people to go, well, I'm just going to dump this because I think it's going to be down tomorrow. And then, you know, that makes the APYs work and it's kind of like a death spiral. So uh, with, a, with a call option, uh, you don't increase the supply unless the token price actually goes up. 
So, um, so yeah, so there's, there's that kind of metric to it, but yeah, I just in general, like I, I've been thinking a lot about these, these different strategies over the, the last six months. So yeah, there's going to be more of them, I think next year. Very cool. And yeah, um, we talked about a bunch of things. I'm curious if there's anything we might've left out for, and you're working on so many things throughout 2022, uh, but you just mentioned three or four really good ones. Is there anything else that you want to hint at for what may be coming uh, for the step finance users this year? Um, I, I think for us, like we, we still have to, like at our core, we're a portfolio manager, so we do have to build out some of that. Um, but I, I do want to have more of the, the data plays available. So, um, mm. so yeah, being able to give people more in insights on their, their P&L of their different positions at any one time, that's certainly one, um, you know, more tooling. Um, so uh, yeah, there's, there's some sort of internal stuff with Solana that maybe we can help people do if they're managing their wallets and that sort of thing. But I guess for us, um, yeah, it, it's about providing useful things that people care about um, and, uh, and to keep, you know, that, uh, that attention. Um, and, if, and if we're able to do that, then, you know, we're going to be successful as long as we, we are able to do that. So, um, yeah, I guess for us, it's, uh, it's call options. It's the, uh, we're going to have uh, locking kind of like the, the curve situation as well. Um, uh, so we're going to sort of have a little bit of those mechanics. Um, but also for us, uh, we did build out an NFT marketplace la late last year, um, but we never launched it because it was a saturated market at the time. And actually a lot of what we already have in our NFT gallery uh, was kind of, uh, you know, repeating that. So, uh, so for us, we, we kind of want more insights on what's going to happen with NFTs, which ones are trending, which ones are... Uh, are people, you know, aping into right now? What, what's, what's the, uh, you know, what's the ability for creators to be able to create these NFTs? Can you just log onto a website, press a button, and then mint a thousand NFTs? Like right now, that's not possible. Um, so for Step, we want to bring a lot of those things, you know, to the fore as well for creators. Um, so yeah, some of those functions of being able to create uh, maybe an entire collection and uh, be able to, to put them out there. You know, we want Step to be that location for that as well. And we think that's a good use case of we don't want to play in the, the marketplace market. Like there's a lot of people doing that already. Mm -hmm. um, we just want to be like that, that data place, you know, the, the place where people get this information and, you know, play, people where they can, you know, create uh, their collections on steps. So, um, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's sort of the position that, the, that we want to see ourselves in in the next six months. Amazing. Looking forward to that, especially with the NFTs. Uh, for the viewers that are looking to follow along with these updates to figure out how they can get involved as it comes out and to get involved with the step community as well. What is the best way for them to learn more? Absolutely. Well, every Wednesday we have our weekly deployment. So check out our Twitter. We always highlight it then. Um, but uh, you can always see us on uh, step.finance. Uh, we have our discord links there, Twitter and, um, uh, you know, blog as well. So, um, so yeah, check out step.finance or, or just follow us on Twitter and join the discord. Uh, most, most welcome everyone. Amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time. George, all the best with STEP and let's follow up in the near future. Thanks so much, Ashton. Great to be here. See you later.